with just coloured people, foreign people. All foreign people get stick and that off of people all the time. Just people smash the windows and that. There's not that many anymore, they've all moved out. What sort of names do you call them? Paki. Tell them to get back to the old country. I said something to the Paki kids. Just said. I'll pick them for ages. But now that they're anymore. They've left? Yeah. Where'd they go? I don't know. Because I was bullying them on that, so they went to their schools. You were bullying them? Yeah. Were they being bullied by other people as well? Yeah, all the time. What were you doing when you say bullying? What do you mean? Uh, every day, just saying things to them, like racism stuff. Well, what did you say? Say, get back to the old country and that. People don't like us, we know, yeah. we know, we don't feel like, they don't welcome us. Yeah. When you say they don't like you, why do you think they don't like you? I don't know, maybe because I'm from a different country. Make sometimes the colour and all that. And how does that make you feel if people aren't making you welcome? It makes me feel like I'm not welcoming here and... You know, they, to they sometimes tell me that this is not my country and to go away, so I, I, I sometimes I want to go away. And what sort of comments might they make? Uh, same thing, just just packy or, or you know, just really strong swear words. All the people in this film are originally from South America. So why did they leave their homes halfway across the world and come to live in Barnsley? I left the, my country because there were, uh, we have some problems, and but I never thought in my life uh, I will come to this country. So. Sometimes when people bully us, I want, I really, really want to go back to my country because I was happy there. I, it has everything. It's the same England it's, as England. It's nothing different, and so that's why I left my my country because we have some serious problem. We basically had a lot of problems in Colombia. My family, my dad, brother, uh, mother, and uh, my dad. After all the problems, he decided that we had to leave the country, so we came to England to apply for asylum and we applied for asylum. My dad was being asked for money, he didn't give it and there were just um, death threats and um, the phone was constantly ringing with you didn't know if it was going to be family or friend or another death threat. There's some lots of things that I remember from my country when I used to go to my granddad's farm. My granddad's got a really massive farm and uh, he's got lots of animals. We used to go and ride in the horses and we used to go and climb and get some mangoes. Lots of nice fruit. We used to go to the rivers to fish and it's really nice with all my cousins. But um, like I told you, when I live in Contea, it's really sad because in here we, I can't normally go out. So were you scared when you were there? Oh, you're, in, you're on guard all the time, yeah. You just like, you, you're at home, you're okay, you might be relaxed. Unless there's any stray bullets, you know, you hear the stories all the time. A three-year-old got killed because of a stray bullet while well, she was in the, ha in the house or, you know, stories that you hear in the, in the news. In the news. Uh, but as soon as you leave the house, you're... In my case, for example, I was just always looking in front of me two blocks in front, two blocks to every side in the back to see who was around me, just in case, you know, be aware of what was happening. Anybody suspicious, anybody getting it close to you that you didn't know, you have to be just careful. Colombia, where Duma comes from, is one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Thousands of innocent people are killed every year by terrorist groups and drug gangs, armed to the teeth with lethal weapons. The only sure way to survive is to get out. My dad just said, right, if you're ready, get on the plane. We got on the plane. And we got here, got off, and just start to everything here. Marley's grandfather wasn't so lucky. There were some people trying to uh, kill us because uh, my mom, in, she was doing a job and uh, she was helping but there was this something happened and uh, so they wanted to kill us and when we were in England uh, we just wouldn't probably last year that did not that we um, my, uh, my grandma told us that my granddad They've, they've killed them, the people that want, wanted to kill us as well. So my mum is quite worried about my grandma and she, she wants to bring her in England but she doesn't know how to. 
and that's where we came to England. I was unhappy when I had to leave my country because um, you understand you, I leave my friends and my family and I also miss where I used to live. It used to be really nice. I used to be very close, uh, very near to the beach. We can just go and play in there. Like most asylum seekers who come to Britain, Duma, Erica and Marley all went to London first and that's where they thought they were going to stay. But immigration officials had other ideas for them and that's when they were sent to live in Barnsley. They had no choice. They'd never heard of Barnsley. We went to live in Kendry. Of course we didn't know Kendry was a bad area but uh, everybody said it was nice. All Everything was uh, good until about one year and a half. After one year and a half everybody started to pick on us because our skin colour. And we, we didn't normally go out because of our English. We didn't know English so when we started to talk English we used to go out and people start to stare at us because of our skin colour. So uh, people start to pick on us and, and call us names. At the beginning it was strange because like I'm not, to be honest, I'm not that dark. I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay and you just get, at the beginning it was just look strange sort of like what, who, who are they, what are they doing here? My family used to go into town centre for example and people just looking at you staring and you're like an alien or strange. Um, uh, that was one thing, and then around the block, they just called uh, Paki, for example, which I'm not even <laughs> Pakistan. Uh, so uh, people always assumed that you're always from there. When you said you were bullied in in Barnes and Barnsley, were you bullied at school or in the streets? In the everywhere. So can you ex describe any of those? What happened to you? Yeah, um, it was like everywhere we go. People, as soon as people see us, they start to call us names. They start to call us Indian people. I don't even know why they call us Indian, because peop Indian people are nice anyway. You see, people are just ignorant in here sometimes. They just call us names and, uh, I mean, it was the point. Because uh, we're all the same. And uh, one day I was coming on the bus with my friends. I've got quite a little friends in Bangsley and uh, who were nice with me and this girl just stand up and push me my sister so she was pulling sorry pulling my sister her and i uh, because i'm the bigger sister and it was my sister you know i didn't feel comfortable for her to be bullying my sister i, I stand up and i told her to to please stop because uh, it wasn't nice so she came and pushed me and my sister because she was like looking this girl bully me, she start to cry and they start to bully my sister as well and all the people in the booth look back but nobody uh, say nothing, I don't know why so uh, they start to bully us on the on the bus and uh, it was really sad, we were crying all the way home from the bus stop and um, when I came here I called a very good friend called Andy and I told him what happened and I told my mom, my mom is really, was really, really angry because he was, I mean, she had enough people bully us. So we called the police and uh, we we told the police, but uh, I mean, they wanted to do a court or something about it. But we, we say no because uh, we forgive them because they just don't like us for some reason. Isn't it? We can't do anything about it now. In Townsend, I'm the only one that goes, family, uh, goes out in my family, like drinks with friends. Uh, you, you do have some racial comments from people. Um, I always just back away because, uh, well, I'm not. A f I, I do not get involved as much as possible. So I just ignore the comments, whatever they say, and you say, okay, thank you very much. Have a good night. Whether whether they're swearing at you or whatever, just thank you. Have a good night. No problem. Um, but thank God I've been very lucky. Friends have been there. We just interfere. We couldn't come out when we wanted to come out. Uh, even if we were in our garden, people came past and they stare at us and laugh at us and, uh, you know, shout at us and do nasty things like uh, sometimes they swear with fingers, you know, and uh, sometimes um, my little sister, the one who's two, she's so sweet, she just come, comes to the door when someone's coming and they, uh, she says hello and they just sometimes they kick the door, the garden door and they scare at her. She said hello and they kicked the garden door. Mm -hmm. 
What could the garden shed do? Yeah, you know, the gates. How old were they? They were like 13, 14. Were they from your school? No, there's some people, they, people just came past our, our, our house and see us outside and they were nasty. In, in Bangsley, in Kendry. That's why, that's why we really have to, to move from there. They, yeah, they, they would say just get out of here, you know, go back to your country or um, or they just get in their little groups and stare at you and laugh at you, whatever. Um, which sometimes can be uncomfortable. So how would you like to be treated like that? You wouldn't like it, would you? No one would. But imagine how much worse it would feel if you had to leave your home in a hurry and go and live in another country where they don't speak your language. So when I came I used to say like things like dog, table, shoe, face, you know, those little very small words, hello, goodbye. Could you speak any English when you came to England? No. Did you know any words at all in English? Hello, thank you, bye. Erica and Marley didn't really know where they were going when they packed their bags and left their family and friends in South America. Did you know anything about England before you came here? No. Did you know about London? Had you heard of London? In my country. When you were living in Ecuador? Did, no. Did, did you know anything at all about England? Nothing. Nothing. But now I can write and now I can do my work by my own. I don't have to copy my friend, my friend's work. And I've got better, uh, good marks. Um, it's a, a, a little bit worried because tomorrow we've got uh, 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 some revising. I have to do some revising because I've, I've got a test tomorrow. Uh, I think it's about English. Uh, I hope I go well because you see English. I can write really good English, but I'll try to do my best. But when I came here, I was straight to college and I went to uh, some English lessons. Uh, and then I did a Spanish A level uh, because what I wanted to do was get qualifications as quick as possible. And anything they gave me to, oh, we got, we're doing a Spanish A level, I'll do it. We're doing, I didn't even let them finish the sentence, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. So that year I ended doing uh, some IT, uh, an IT course, I did two qualifications for English. I did a, an AS and an A level of Spanish. Uh, that was my first year at college, yeah. Duma's qualifications have already helped him get work at Barnsley Council and a job working for a computer company. But the job he really likes doing is completely different. I'm passionate about bartending. Uh, when I first started it, it was just a normal job and eventually I started to fall more in love with it. And, uh, and I love to serve customers, I love to talk to them, I love to teach them about a drink, I love to do them a cocktail, I love to say how are you doing, it's okay, you know, and, and I don't see bartending as a Saturday job or anything like that, it's, uh, and that's my, <laughs> my passion at the moment, yes. But even though he loves his job, he suffered from racist abuse where he works. Recently, my last problem was uh, I work in a bar, and uh, just these four guys, five guys, just asking for BNP, BNP. And uh, do, you, do you sell a drink of BNP? Have you got any BNP? And I went, uh, no, my friend, oh, a lot of BNP in Bradford. Are you from Bradford? No, no I'm okay. But Bradford is, the, I'm guessing they were mentioning Bradford because it's a lot more um, multicultural place, there's a lot of more foreigners in, in Bradford. But just kept mentioning the BNP. Bullying and racism are real problems for asylum seekers. So much so that Erica and Marley have been forced to leave Barnsley. How would you feel if you were in their position? How would you feel if you had to go and live in a foreign country where you were constantly bullied? 